Ann here from Hooked on Homemade Happiness. Welcome back to my channel. Today in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do the Tunisian knit stitch. For this stitch, I am using a worsted weight yarn and a J6 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. If you are new to Tunisian crochet, I have a video linked below for the Tunisian simple stitch. We'll give, that will give you more of an overview of a beginner um, Tunisian crochet. In this tutorial, it is assumed that you kind of understand the basics of Tunisian crochet. So there is a video linked below, below if you are a beginner with Tunisian. So to get started with the knit stitch, I am going to get my yarn on my hook. For this Tunisian stitch, you can use any number of chains. I'm just going to start with a chain 10 for this tutorial. Here is my starting chain of 10, and I'm going to be just doing a regular foundation row um, for the knit stitch. So I'm going to start on my second chain from my hook insert my hook into that second chain. I'm using these back bumps here. You yarn over and pull up a loop and now I have two stitches on my hook. I'm going to do that all the way across my row. So here is my forward pass for my foundation row. Now for my return pass I'm going to start with a chain one and then yarn over and pull through two loops. And I'm going to do that all the way across my row. Yarn over and pull through two, all the way across. And here is my foundation row. Now for the knit stitch, we are going to be inserting our hook in between the two loops created from our foundation row. So again, I'm going to, so I already have my first stitch on my hook, so I'm going to skip the very first loop here. So here, when you kind of spread these apart, you could see the space in between. I'm going to insert my hook in that space there, and then yarn over and pull up a loop. Again, here's my next stitch. So there's the space created um, from the front and back loop. So I'm going to insert my hook in that space there and yarn over and pull up a loop. So here's my next vertical bar. And here is that space in between those two loops where I'm going to be inserting my hook and pulling up that loop. And I'm going to be doing that all the way across my row. Finding that space in between the two loops. I'm going to do that all the way to my second to last stitch. So here's right before the last one. I'm going to insert my hook here. So I gather both of those loops behind both of these loops along the side of my stitch and yarn over and pull up a loop there. Now for my return pass, I'm going to start with a chain one. And then I will yarn over and pull through two stitches all the way across. There's two, yarn over, pull through two. So now in row three, it's going to be a repeat of what we just did in row two. So I have my first stitch on my hook, so I'm going to skip this first vertical bar. And now there are, the space in between the loops is a little bit easier to see in these stitches than in that foundation row. So here you could see this loop here in the front and then where it kind of goes to the back of the row. That space right here is where I'm going to be inserting my hook and pulling up a loop. Again, 
my next stitch. If I spread it apart, I can see right here is where I'm going to insert my hook and pull up a loop. I'm going to do that all the way across my row. And you could start to see how it does look like a knit stitch already as we're going. Insert my hook here in this next space in between loops. Here's my next stitch. Insert my hook here in between those loops. Just continue pulling up a loop in between. But here's my last stitch of the row. Again, I'm going to go behind the two loops on the side and pull up my loop. And you should have 10 loops on your hook or however many you start, how many chains you started with should be the number of loops or stitches that you have on your hook. So now for my return pass, I will chain one and then yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and do that all the way across the row. There you have the Tunisian knit stitch. We can do that row one more time. This will be the row repeat for this stitch. So again, here's my next stitch. You can see the vertical bar here. Insert my hook in between these two loops and pull up a loop, and I have two stitches on my hook. Again, here's my next stitch. Continuing to just put that hook in between those two loops. Do that all the way across my row. So I get to the end where I'm going to put my hook in those both those side loops here. And now for my return pass, we'll chain one and then yarn over and pull through two loops. I'm going to do that all the way across. Here are my last two. And there you have it. So go ahead and repeat that row until your project is the length that you are looking for. And then come on back and I will show you how to bind off this stitch. So here I have completed a couple more rows for the Tunisian knit stitch. And you could just see how it creates just this pretty knit look. Now, unlike knitting, it creates a really thick piece of fabric. And again, it is one-sided like all Tunisian stitches. Um, and this stitch in particular gets very, very, it curls a lot at the, um, at the ends. So to alleviate that, you could go to a lighter weight yarn or even go up a hook size or two than you normally would with whatever um, yarn size that you are using. So now that I have done a few more rows, I'm going to go ahead and bind this off and close up my stitches. So to do that, I'm going to do my forward pass kind of the same way that we have been doing. I'm going to be inserting my hook into that same space. So right here in between those loops for the next stitch, insert my hook there. I'm going to pull my loop through, my yarn through, and then I'm going to pull it through the loop that's on my hook and close it off, kind of creating um, a slip stitch. I'm going to insert my hook into the next space, grab my yarn, pull it through that space, and on the loop of my hook. I'm going to do that all the way across my row. Inserting my hook into the same space that I have been throughout this pattern. So here I'm at the last stitch where I'm going to insert my hook on um, by those last two loops on the side. 
and pull up that loop and pull it through the loop on my hook. And now you can cut your yarn and pull it through to finish off. So there you have the Tunisian knit stitch and you can do some blocking to help with the curling um, or if you're sewing it for squares like for the blanket um, after you sew you won't be able to really see the curling at all and there you have the Tunisian knit stitch I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you find different patterns you can use the Tunisian knit stitch with Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.